In the first episode, Lamborghini started making sports cars, but some of the most iconic and expensive Lamborghinis are still to come. This is the second episode of the evolution of Lamborghini. In 1972, Ferruccio Lamborghini sold his controlling shares to George Henry Rossetti, a wealthy Swiss businessman and a friend of Lamborghini. Rossetti bought the shares for $600,000. In December 2020, those shares would be worth a whopping $6 billion. Under new ownership, the Lamborghini company switched things up by releasing a 2.5-liter V8 model, named the Lamborghini Uraco, which is a Spanish slang word meaning little bull. The four-passenger sports car was priced at $22,500 and intended to be a more affordable alternative to the Ferrari Dino and Maserati Maroc. It could reach a top speed of 149 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. Besides the 2.5-liter V8 model, two- and three-liter models of the car were also made available with either worse or better top speeds and acceleration times. In total, 776 Uracos were built over a period of seven years. Next, the Lamborghini company started working on a successor to the Miura in 1974. The result was the Lamborghini Countach, which, oddly enough, was not named after a bull or an area of Spain. The name actually came from an expression made by a guard in his local dialect when he saw the design of the new car. Its equivalent in English would be something like, wow. And it's easy to understand why he had this reaction. The wedge-shaped Lamborghini had a completely different design than any other car on the market. It also was the first production car to incorporate scissor doors. Returning to the 3.9-liter V12 engine, the Countach caused a few gasped expressions with its speed and acceleration, too. It could reach 187 miles per hour and accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 5 seconds, making it much faster and quicker than the Miura. The Countach wasn't cheap, though. It was the first Lamborghini to cost over $50,000. It became the longest-running production car with 1,983 units made over 16 years. Emerging from the shadows in 1976 was the Lamborghini Silhouette. It replaced the Uraco with a Targa roof, basically making it semi-convertible. It had a 3-liter V8 engine, making it faster and quicker than the Uraco, but also more expensive. The Silhouette wasn't a success, though. The plan was to win over the U.S. market, but that never happened. In three years, only 55 units were made. With that amount, they wouldn't even win over the North Pole market. The silhouette wasn't the only bad thing that happened to the company. Lamborghini also had internal problems because of the change in ownership, and to make matters worse, in the 1970s, there was an oil crisis, skyrocketing oil prices. As a consequence, Lamborghini car sales suffered because of their high fuel consumption. In 1978, Lamborghini's situation worsened so much that it entered bankruptcy. Two years later, the company was purchased for $3 million by Patrick Memron and his brother. Memron, who was only 24 at the time, became the CEO and was later credited for being the man who saved Lamborghini. In 1981, under the leadership of Lamborghini's new owners, the Jalpa was produced. It was the last Lamborghini to use a V8 engine for a long time. The Jalpa was named once again after a famous breed of fighting bulls. It replaced the Silhouette, and although the top speed was lower and it had a higher price, the Jalpa was more successful with 420 units produced in seven years. You probably wouldn't choose Lamborghini as a go-to manufacturer if you're looking to travel across rough terrain. But did you know that Lamborghini has made several off-road trucks over the years? The LM002, also known as the Lamborghini truck or the Rambo Lambo, was made in 1986 after two prototype off-roaders had been made, including the Cheetah, which was a military vehicle. The LM002 came with special Pirelli tires, which could run virtually flat without risk and handle the desert heat. Two special versions of the truck participated through the tough terrains at the Dakar Rally. The 5.2-liter V12 Rambo Lambo could reach a top speed of 130 miles per hour and accelerate to 60 in 8.5 seconds. 
300 units were made, costing $65,000. Fun fact, the first LM002 was delivered to the King of Morocco. Another fun fact, the truck featured in several movies, including The Fast and Furious. With the arrival of the 1990s came a new era for Lamborghini, the era of supercars that were capable of speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour. It started with the Lamborghini Diablo that was powered by a 5.7 liter V12 engine. The Diablo could hit 202 miles per hour and go from zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Over the course of 11 years, 900 units were made. The most expensive Lamborghini before the Diablo was the LM002 that had a price tag of $65,000. The Diablo was more than three times as expensive as it was sold for a whopping $200,000. The Lamborghini Diablo SV followed in 1995 and improved upon the speed of the Diablo, which makes sense since SV stands for Super Veloce or Super Fast in English. It maxed out at 208 miles per hour and went from zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. It was also more expensive with a price tag of almost $230,000. Not content with those figures, Lamborghini then made the Diablo GTR as a track ready model with power improvements, a stripped interior and a reduction in weight. It pushed 210 miles per hour and had a zero to 60 time of 3.4 seconds. Only 32 GTRs were made and were sold for over $300,000. The Diablo lineup became super successful. Almost 3,000 units were sold across the world. Fun fact, the name Diablo means devil in Spanish. In 1998, Ferdinand Pieca, the chairman of the Volkswagen Group, went on a buying spree purchasing Lamborghini, Bentley, and Bugatti. Lamborghini was bought for around $110 million and placed under parent company Audi, which is also owned by Volkswagen. Fun fact, currently the Volkswagen Group owns 12 huge car brands. That is just unbelievable. The Murcielago was introduced as a coupe in 2001 and served as the flagship V12 of Lamborghini's lineup. It was the first model made under the new ownership of German parent company Audi. The Murcielago had a 6.2 liter V12 and performed similarly to the Diablo, but its look made it a favorite of many. It's probably why almost 4,000 of them were made with a starting price of $273,000. Fun fact, the Murcielago Roadster was driven by Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins, which is a very clever nod to the superhero because Murcielago is the Spanish word for bat. Following the success of the Murcielago, Lamborghini came out with the Gallardo. Powered by a 5-liter V10 that could reach a top speed of 192 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. To own one yourself would have cost at least $180,000 when they were first released. In total, over 7,000 original Gallardos were produced. In 2005, the Gallardo Super Ligero was unleashed. It was lighter than the original model due to the use of carbon fiber parts. It maxed out at 196 miles per hour and could go from 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. 618 units were produced and it cost $50,000 more than the original. The fastest of the Gallardo range though was the LP564, which was also used by the Italian authorities to patrol highways. It had a 5.2 liter V10 and with a top speed of 202 miles per hour, you'd have a hard time outrunning the Italian police. It could reach 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds and was sold for $198,000. The Gallardo, with all its variants, became the best-selling Lamborghini model. Throughout its production run, more than 14,000 Gallardos were built. The Reventon is a limited edition masterpiece that was first revealed at the 2007 Frankfurt Motor Show. With a design inspired by the very latest aeronautics, this sleek, swift machine was named after a bull who killed a matador, with the word Reventon meaning small explosion or burst in Spanish. It was the first Lambo to utilize a 6.5 liter V12 engine that could reach a top speed of 205 miles per hour. It could accelerate to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. In total, only 21 units were made, including one for the Lamborghini Museum. In 2009, a Roadster version was unveiled and Lamborghini produced another 15 units of the Reventon Roadster. The Reventon became the first Lamborghini to be priced at more than $1 million. 
And if that wasn't expensive enough, the Roadster version was sold for $2.1 million. Come on, for this amount of money, you can buy yourself a luxury villa. In 2008, Lamborghini unveiled a four-door sports car, the Estoka. Just imagine someone bringing their kids to school with this beast. It could reach a top speed of 211 miles per hour, making it the fastest Lamborghini so far. Production plans for the Estoka were canceled, so only one unit was built. In 2009, Lamborghini made a special version of the Murcielago, the Murcielago SV. Using a 6.5-liter V12 engine, it broke the three-second barrier for 0 to 60 miles per hour. It did not only become the quickest Lamborghini so far, but also the fastest with a top speed of 213 miles per hour. Only 186 units were made, and it was launched with a price tag of $450,000. In the next episode, we'll feature the most iconic, futuristic, and expensive Lamborghinis of all time. So subscribe to stay up to date in the latest of this series. Click the video on the left to watch episode 3.